as usual, they interfere again. So I'm going to give you the exact the, the, the pressure point. I'm going to touch the pressure point for you to show you exactly what these archons are capable of doing and how your life is the way it is because of interference from entities outside of this realm. These archons and aeons don't exist in the other matrix either. They exist in the real world. Within this matrix and the other one, we have given them plenty of masks to wear. From gray alien outfits to tall Pleiadians to whatever else, okay? The fundamental thing between them all is they take away these moments. They take this away from you. They take these moments away. Those moments in life where you're just yourself and somebody has the heart to take a picture of you hugging a baby. Someone takes a picture of you walking down, the, you know, with them walking down the street. The love of your life is taking a picture of you in the forest. Your dad's taking a picture of you and your sister and your, you guys are sitting there. And those moments of humanity get taken from you. And what's left are the memories of pain and fighting and violence and anger and loss and grief and solitude and fight and bad words and they take this away and they leave the memories which would result in you feeling worse the more negative you feel the more you are a light bulb to them like a light in a salt lamp. Am I an archon to that light? Because I'm controlling the current of electricity to that area for my own benefit of negative ions. Does that make me an archon to the source that is the light within that light bulb? Does it make me evil? That's how archons look at you. You are food for them, and your memories that create humanity between you and your loved ones are burnt light bulbs. So in order for you to shine in the way that they can see and feed off of, they take away your humanity. They replace it with false images and memories of pain, solitude and sorrow, so that you can emit a light so that the light you emit can attract other beings of light to come and help you. And then when you do that, they take them from you too, until you're nothing but a dried, old thing, dying, withering away. And the only thing people remember is the worst of you. Because that way, the pain you feel gives them adequate watts to light up their food supply. Now, can they feed on something else? Absolutely. Are they choosing to do this? Absolutely. Is it malicious intent to do this? No. Outside of this realm, they are all teachers helping the students evolve. They simply have to wear masks to show you that love lives inside you so that you can see yourself 
through the reflection of their eyes as if you were nothing more than food to get you to realize and cherish what's actually important to you to get you to fight for your own life and your own memories so that you don't give up within the matrix within the matrix a dream within a dream from generation to generation grandmother to mother to daughter son and father to grandfather to, to everyone in between what makes you connected to these beings these memories who was wise enough to take this photograph of a mother and her children watching a spooky movie of a mother knitting a blanket for her child two children in a restaurant just laughing over coca-cola glasses two children just staring this moment of just a mother kissing a baby while the baby's being held by the mother's best friend these moments that are taken away create less humanity within you I was with someone very important to me for almost eight years of my life and his and because of interference the time that he remembers is less than six years and many moments within that timeline were distorted ripped away twisted and the grace between us diminished and what he remembers is a nightmare while what I remember is heaven on earth all because of our contact interference and the intent of it being to create a narcissistic person so that the narcissistic person is devoid of emotions and becomes a tool to find more food supply so the archon takes a being of light drains it of, it of its light creates a shadow being the shadow being goes and finds the light being the light being finds the reason to bring the shadow being back to life the shadow being drains the light being and in the process of draining the light being the shadow being comes back to life because it is full of life and light at one point through the process of draining and then that light is being drained from the shadow being to the archon and now there's two shadow beings devoid of light all because of an archon feeding off of them all because the archon refuses to evolve and, and ascend in its own way because it is also afraid in order to prevent yourself from evolving you must be fearful otherwise you evolve in order to harm somebody you must be afraid that's the only reason harm occurs is because you're afraid so you're hurting someone to show them how afraid you are violence is only stemming from fear and not fear of others fear of yourself because if the violent person can actually be loving enough to where the violence is gone from within them that means they're not a food source anymore and they're a being of light that means whoever they were prior has to go so in order for a narcissist to come back to life and to come back to light they have to destroy who they were as a narcissist and the only way that that happens is for the narcissist to actually love a being of light and when that happens and the light transfer occurs from the being of light to the narcissist from the narcissist to the archon and the tampering of memories the light being that refuels the narcissist becomes the new narcissist and the narcissist becomes a redeemed person it's an endless cycle of switching out batteries while one recharges and the other one drains 
And the main trigger of why this tactic has worked for so long is because the simple moments of kissing each other, holding each other, sitting there watching TV, going for walks and holding pinkies, going to a decoration store and buying decorations for the house, redecorating the house, having sex, making love, writing things together, reading a book together, giving each other drive-by kisses as you walk past each other in the house while you're doing your own things. Basics of life, sitting there at a restaurant eating things together, being at your family's house and noticing your husband's taking pictures of you while you're hugging the baby, your niece. And, you're, and you, all you can think is, I'm so grateful that I have somebody with such an open heart that knows that I would love to remember this moment and he's taking the picture for me so that he can show me later. And then an archon shows up and takes the memory of that person taking the picture of you away and how they felt gets manipulated by aeonic interference. Because in order to really manipulate people, you must have the wisdom to know how to do it. And you must be of the truth enough, the aletheia, the aeons of truth, must be working with you in such a way that you know exactly which memories to take to truly damage a soul to the dark. Pure evil but only within this matrix because we're not supposed to stay here we're supposed to go back home and i don't mean home as in back to source and melting into nothingness other than a massive collection of thoughts i mean home as in the real world where our real bodies enter the matrix to come here to heal our inner world as long as we're in this matrix we're a food supply so what they're doing is basically saying you want to stay here you're going to be food you want to go go ahead but if you're going to go you have to choose love and they make that choice difficult by taking away every loving moment between you and another person to where there's nothing left but your inner child wondering what the fudge happened to this world what happened to the family and the people and the memories? What happened to the love of their lives? What happened to every good morning and good night kiss? What happened to every cup of coffee and every walk across the beach in the park and every duck that was fed? What happened to every note that was scribbled? Oh, right. Those memories are blocked off to see what two people that truly love each other, a collection of human beings that truly are a family, what they would do if those memories of bonding were taken. How would you treat your best friend if every moment that made them your best friend was taken and all that was left was your water cooler talk moments? How would you react to your neighbors if suddenly 30 years of life with your neighbors of good experiences was taken and you were only left with the bad experiences that occurred within those 30 years. What would you do if every good thing you ever purchased at Walmart broke and every bad thing you ever purchased remained? The tips, the balance, the tipping scale. The scales would be tipped in favor of in balance. So I'm asking you, not as a human, not as an Aeon, not as an Archon, not as a God or Goddess, not as, not even a source. I'm asking you, as the voice of every single moment that you've forgotten, that made you human. Will you please open your mind and evolve to know that even the human has a predator and that predator is only preying on you so that you can learn how to defend yourself and that the value of your life 
is worth more than you being afraid for your life or your memories or for you to be fearful or angry or hateful or spiteful or vengeful to be angry and and toxic and just petty to break things to take things to hide things to lie to manipulate to deceive illusions and delusions and gossip and malice those are all things of the archons all of them because they all lack the respect for love and the respect for life and they all work be away from transparency because it's what they do you don't pet a snake you don't pet a scorpion and you don't <laughs> and if you intend on giving an archon love you better have an infinite supply of love to give because you're basically bringing the dead back to life so you better love them the way God or source would love them the way the unfathomable would love So be careful and choose love at every opportunity. And if you're mad at someone, be aware that your human mind has been tampered with through subliminal messages, through videos, through screens, through images, through technology, through the electrical currents that carry entities, through the liquid crystal display of your computer that is a dimensional gateway. Look it up. This is all scientifically proven. Choose love, because if you really hate someone, have the wisdom and the intelligence combined with the open heart and mind, father, mother, son, daughter, Holy Spirit combined, the five points of balance, earth, air, fire, water, aether, mother, father, son, daughter, spirit. have enough knowledge and foresight and the feeling of heart to know that if God exists, so does everything else. If love exists, so does everything else. If choice exists, so does the beings that take the choice away. If memory exists, so does the thing that takes the memory away. If there is hate, then there was love first. If there was anger, there was fear first. If there are tears, there is a love and fear of the loss of love first. The fundamental tapestry of life is woven with a fabric, and that fabric is one I know, and that fabric can be tampered with in only one way. The unraveling of what actually made you human. The Archons were raised without love, respect, or transparency, so all they know is hate, fear, and lies. Now, are the Aeons to blame for this? The Aeons should have known, shouldn't they? They did. That's why Lucifer fell and went and looked for everything else. The dark and the light, the light and the dark. There was something behind the veil and we had to know what it was. And if there was someone behind the veil, we had to go and get them and help them. That's what the light does. Now you take those memories away and you see the fall, the Lucifer, the rebellion, the Sophia as something terrible. Because you were made to forget why they left in the first place. If two people are fighting after 20 years of life together, there's a reason why and it isn't because of actions taken in the present day. It's because the memories leading up to the present day were tampered with. If true love can be made to forget that it was true love, it isn't because it wasn't true love. 
it's because some being outside of you or inside of you tampered with your neural networking to make the association with the love of your life be with the worst enemy you've ever had through the tampering of memories, experiences, and the removal of forgiveness. Forgiveness that occurred. So this is your Archon 101 class. Know your enemy as yourself, for you are your own worst enemy. Archons tamper with memories. So if there's someone in your life you really can't stand, it's time you humble yourself and forgive everyone, including the Archons. Because in the grand scheme of things, in the wider picture of why all of this is happening, all this pain and suffering and all this trauma llama in this world, is for you to see the bigger picture, the wider perspective and to level up your living experience. If you really think the Aeon Sophia gave birth to the Archon Yaldabaoth and then immediately punished him and called him blind and stupid, then you have issues that you need to resolve within yourself because your neural networking has been tampered to remember a false truth a mother doesn't abandon her children. And if she does, in every lifetime afterwards, she feels the pain of it. A child doesn't, isn't born hating its mother. And no god is created thinking it's the only god. Unless it's been blinded and things removed from it and its ability to perceive and be intelligent and wise taken from it and the disturbances between the mother and the child to have been altered internally, chemically, hormonally, pheromonally to, to disrupt the connection between the mother and child, the Aeon and the Archon. And how fitting really that the Aeon Sophia, the one closest to the underworld waters, in the tree of life, in the Gnostic family tree. She's the, she's the veil. Sophia is the veil between the underworld and the upper world. Do you really think that someone w that rides the in-between, Heimdall, the, rain, the keeper of the rainbow bridge, the barkeepers, the bartenders, the bouncers, do you really think any of them are designed to hate? They're designed to know who passes and who doesn't, who's ready and who's not. And the best way to see who's ready and who's not is do you feel hate and fear for anyone, including yourself? And if you claim you don't, how about if we tamper with some memories and see if you do then? Oh, you love someone unconditionally? Do you love them unconditionally if the only thing you remember of them is, is anger, fear, and hatred? Do you love yourself enough if you all you remember of your own life is pain? Self-inflicted and inflicted from the outside. Can you forgive unconditionally? Can you accept unconditionally? Because if you really want to create heaven on earth, guess what, buddy? It's not a cakewalk. You can't just sit and bask in the sunlight and say, I'm creating heaven on earth. What you're creating is <laughs> a tan. Real life, real love, means that these moments of your life, these memories, are more than just photographs. They are who, they are the things that make you who you are. So those beings telling you to cut ties with your past, to cut cords, to forget your memories, to move away from what was and to let the past go, tell them kindly, the past is your family and without your family, you're nothing more than a plant 
in a pot by itself, withering away because it's all alone. And to be connected through the mycelium in the dirt of your existence, just because you're connected with a silver cord with everybody else, doesn't make your life any less or more pleasant, does it? Because what you're really wanting is the connection of a mother or father figure, best friends, and someone there to photograph every moment you can't photograph because you're busy enjoying the moment. You want a life partner and a family. Every human being does. So guess what the best way is to give the human the kryptonite? You take this away and you put a veil in front of it. So illuminate yourself, please, human species. Because you're just as much Archon as Yaldabaoth, and you're just as much Aeon as Sophia. And it doesn't make you any better than anybody else. Archons. Welcome to your class. Archons mess with memories. So do Aeons. <laughs>